Good day, this is Heidi Mitchell. My husband Guy and I are in a prophetic art and music ministry called Revelations in Art. Guy paints prophetically and I play piano music for each of his paintings as the Holy Spirit gives me utterance. Today I'd like, like to share something with you about a track that God gave me earlier this year um, as a result of the virus this is, that has taken the world by storm. In February of this year, I got a message from a friend um, whose father had been taken very ill with this virus. He'd been airlifted and was in ICU in hospital. Now she had experienced our ministry in the past and she knew that God has used us very powerfully. So she asked me if I could pray and ask the Holy Spirit, was there not maybe a track of music that could specifically target this virus and that she would like to play it to her father with a trust and a faith that the sound that God would use it to bring healing. And so I did, I prayed and sure enough the Holy Spirit gave me a piece of music that I recorded and sent to her via WhatsApp. Her father made a miraculous recovery and um, he was a very fit healthy man who had run many marathons in his life and within three months he was back running marathons again. This piece of music was particularly targeted at the lungs, at breathing and of the healing of the lung tissue. And in the beginning of the track, I give an explanation of what the different parts of the music mean and how the Holy Spirit showed me to interpret it verbally. So I give a bit of an um, introduction, which you'll hear after, after this. But um, as a result, I decided to release this again today. And um, especially since that track went out far and wide, far further and wider than just my friend's father. And the testimonies that have come back have been remarkable. And we can only give Father all the glory and the honour and the praise for this wonderful weapon that he's kept for this time that we're in, the power and the weapon of sound. I've had testimonies come back of people who have been, who have recovered, have been healed from the virus. But interestingly enough, not just from the virus. I've had testimony from people who, two people who have had improvement, drastic improvement in their cancer symptoms. Um, one woman who sent a message to say that as she was listening, a tremendous pain in her jaw just lifted. Um, another was um, a woman whose grandson was really struggling with suicidal thoughts and had gone into cutting himself. And she sent this music to her daughter and said, play it to the grandson. He was 15 years old. The mother then sat him down on the couch and began to play this music to him. And he almost immediately just reacted and he said, I... I'm getting too nauseous, I can't bear this, and he put his hands over his ears and he just said, I can't do this, I can't listen to this. Um, and she stopped the music. But a bit later on in the evening he came back to her and he said, Mom, I need to finish listening to that music. So she said, right, let's prepare. And they sat down and listened to the whole track and the most powerful deliverance occurred with this boy. And in the beginning of the track, I give a short explanation of what the different parts mean, but I also mentioned David and how when he played his harp, the demons would leave Saul. And I believe that's part of the declaration that was made through this track, that even the demons have to flee if a sound that is filled with the Holy Spirit enters a person and enters a room. And one of the most beautiful testimonies I also heard was of a man who was also in, in a, first in ICU and then in a room with three other men in Johannesburg. He had also received this track. He was on the road to recovery, but really still struggling to breathe. And the three other men in the room also battling to get breath. And every time he felt that tightness come, he would just play this track of music. And he said he became so sensitive in the spirit to fear that would want to come in at different times into that room. And he would feel how the fear would capture one man or another man. And he could hear in their breathing that the fear was making it worse and then he would just play the music and immediately it would lift and that spirit of fear would go and the breathing would ease up. Because I truly believe that this virus was sent by the enemy and the virus has a physical effect on our bodies for sure. But within this virus comes an attachment. Just as when you open an email, there's an attachment. And you have a choice whether you open the attachment or not. You can choose when you receive an email whether you open the attachment. And so it is the attachment that comes with this virus is fear. And we have a choice 
are we going to open that attachment or not? And also another question that I've had from many believers is why is Father God allowing his children to go through this? Why are so many believers getting sick? And the answer I've had from Father when I've asked him is I'm putting my children through the fire. Because how else do you test the condition of your heart? How else do you know whether there's fear lurking within you if you don't get put through the fire? So I say thank you, Father, because in June of this year, a guy and I were hit very hard by this virus, very hard. We were down. And I know that from the get-go, our biggest fight was not against what was happening to us physically, but against that attachment that kept looming in front of us. The enemy just wants you to open the attachment because if you do, then he has run over your lungs and your breathing that can totally constrict you and stop the air from flowing altogether. But if you don't open the attachment, you come through this. You do come through it, and we did. There was one night where we were lying in bed and we had a family who were looking after us. They were a family of angels. And um, for three and a half hours, I interceded for Guy in tongues as I was listening to him just not knowing if he was going to take each next, next breath. And I would pray him through and pray him through. Because what is it that we, can, that we are so afraid of? What is it that the enemy is trying to make us so afraid of? It's sickness, fear of sickness, and fear of death. But Jesus' promise is that even if we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we do not need to be afraid because he is with us. And so I experienced his closeness and his presence in those nights when, I, when we were both struggling for breath so much, when we were both so nauseous you could hardly sit up, when I had my nose and the inside of my mouth just raw and bleeding, I knew Jesus was there. In fact, his presence was so tangible that I sometimes looked on the side of the bed to see if there was an indentation with him sitting there because I felt his presence so closely. And I said, Lord, if I had to go through this in order to experience you in the way that I did it, I say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for trusting me with this experience. And he never left us. He never forsook us. He walked every step of this healing journey with us. And we have come out the other end. And we are strong and we are healthy. And we say, thank you, Father. And we praise him for his healing hand upon us. The other thing the enemy makes us afraid of is death. But it says in the New Testament, death, where is your sting? Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection took away the sting of death. We do not even have to fear death. Because the everlasting arms of our Father awaits us on the other side. So the enemy has no hold on us. And this foreign substance that the world holds as, a, as an option for healing is not an option as far as Father goes. I really believe that with all my heart. In the lockdown last year, he gave me a vision of four gift boxes. And each box was wrapped in a beautiful bright colour with a ribbon on it. And he showed me that each one of these boxes represented one of these foreign substances that are now propagate, promulgated by the world as a solution. And as each box was opened in this vision, each one held the same thing. And it was a timer for a bomb. And he said to me that when you open that box, there's a, and that box that you open means this, that um, a timer goes off in your body and that there's long-term health implications for opting for that solution. And so um, I, Guy and I have opted not to take that because we trust Father. We trust God for our protection and that he is with us and that he has a, the best in store for us and we do not need to be afraid. And if you face serious consequences by not taking the foreign substance, he's asking you to raise your level of faith, to raise your level of faith to the level where you know he will provide and he will open doors where the world says, you cannot enter here, you cannot enter there. Father says, who are they to say? There are so many people who are so worried and so afraid about what the government and the world is saying we can and cannot do as a result of this foreign substance. But God is saying, why are we not more concerned about what he says you will be able and not be able to do? when you take that foreign substance. Something to think about. But today I pray that this track of music will bless you. Today I pray that it will bring you peace. 
if you are still, still struggling or you're in the midst of fighting this um, virus, that the music will enter you and just flow through you, that it will bring healing in your lungs and in your lung tissue, that it will bring deliverance and freedom in areas where you might have struggled for a long time. I pray that the Holy Spirit will come and minister you, to you directly through the sound. And today I chose to stand in front of this painting, which is one that guided of the Holy Spirit and the colours, is the colours of the rainbow, because it represents the sevenfold Spirit of God. Um, it is so phenomenal and so huge, we can't even fathom it. But my, but my, may this sevenfold Spirit of God fill you today with courage and healing and encouragement as you listen to this track of music. May God bless you. As we know, it is sound that brought down the walls of Jericho. And we know that when Saul was plagued by demons, he would call David to play on his harp to still and quiet those demons. And we know there was a time when Elisha wanted to prophesy and called for a musician in order for the prophecy to flow. So we know that there is power and a secret and that the sound is a secret weapon in our hands in these times that we're moving into. And so I prayed yesterday, and Father released a sound to me that I played on the piano, which I would like to share with you now. Play it to anybody that you feel would benefit from it. In the beginning, you can hear quite a slow pace, and Father said it's the labored breathing from people who are struggling to get air, struggling to get oxygen. But at the same time, you can begin to hear the lion of the tribe of Judah begin to march. Then the music moves into a very angelic section. And Father showed me that in this section, he was releasing thousands upon thousands of ministering angels as people were praying and crying out to him. And in, the, in their hands, these angels had oxygen masks. But these were supernatural oxygen masks carrying the Holy Spirit's very breath in them. And as they were administering these masks to people, the breath of God was beginning to flow through lungs, bringing healing and restoration in a way and renewing the lungs to a place that they were even before the sickness came. And in the music, you can, you can actually hear the breath. You can hear the breath. So may it flow, may it flow. And then in the final section, you can hear the victory, the victorious sound of the King of Kings who rules above all and who wants to bring deliverance and freedom and healing to his people. May the sound flow over you. May the sound bring healing. May the sound deliver you from fear. May the sound heal the tissues in your lung. May the sound bring the oxygen that you require. And may the sound bring a testimony to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. In Jesus' name, amen.
Oh, I trust that that music was a great blessing to you. So I know that this, just as I said at the beginning of the track, as David played his harp and dispelled the spirits from Saul, so I know that this music also brings peace and dispels the spirit of fear and many others. So I hope that um, you would share any testimonies that you experience or that you hear of in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you and share this video as much as you can, that people will be touched and healed and ministered to in Jesus' name.